Advanced Studio. Advanced Studio Render Mode gives a designer the ability to display a realistic image in real time, including effects of material, textures, lighting, shadows, and reflections, which then can be presented and allow a customer to choose the specific rendering attributes they desire on any product, while being able to edit and display these enhancements right away. In this tutorial, we will be going over the modes, functions, and capabilities through a previously modeled BMW i8. First thing to do is keep organized. You will want to create feature groups of the features you would like to edit, such as primary and secondary coats for easier selection in advanced mode. You do so by entering into Parts Navigator, expanding your model history, and selecting the components. After selecting them, you will right click on them, click on feature group, and you are able to enter an appropriate name for the significant features that is created at the bottom of the model history list. I've previously set mine as so. Proceeding to the ribbons bar, you will right click it and enter render mode and enter into advanced studio. From here, you're prompted to enter into Ray Trace Studio, which can render higher quality images and save the images for any further use necessary. Now, in the normal 3D environment, you're also given capabilities to create your own high quality images of a static model, just the same way Ray Trace does, but in this setting, it's a more user friendly way to manipulate the settings and to have a second display to compare against what you're doing. It will not be necessary for this tutorial. From this point, I would like to undock my part navigator as so, so I can easily access my feature groups. And now that we are in advanced studio mode, we are given the different options for the system's materials. From here, we can click on the primary coat and as a bolt for a couple presets for different kinds of car paints. You are able to right click and apply. System materials. For this one we chose red. Now we can do the secondary. We will choose black and for the windows we are able to go to a glass material and highlight the rear feature group and make that plastic. Now, for instance, if you were speaking with a customer or presenting this design, if they wanted to see what it would look like in carbon fiber or blue, you're easily able to do so by highlighting your feature group primary coat, coming to the systems materials list, applying carbon fiber, or applying blue. All of these used system materials are then stored in the materials in part, where they can be further edited by right-clicking and selecting edit. From here, you're given several types of settings where you can alter the settings, translucency, ambient base, diffuse base, uh, several of their settings, the bumpiness to dimpled or rough, knurled. Also the patterns to cubes, polka dots, stripes, wood types, different transparencies with wrap grids, wrapped image and stencils, texture spaces, for this example, we will apply a blue marble pattern. And then for all of the types, you're able to alter the scale. Once assuring that the desirable coat has been designed, then we can enter into system scenes and apply different types of scenery between indoor
outdoor and studio which was our first scene these all include different types of illuminations that are preset for more advanced rendering options we proceed into scene editor Reviewing the tabs, the lights tab possesses simplified lighting settings and their corresponding shadow settings with adjustable orientations and intensities. Reviewing global illumination contains settings mixed with the stages illumination where you can choose any system scene preset illumination or a preset palette as an overall illumination for the component. These files can be HDR as the best choice or even a standard digital image such as a JPEG. The best way to visualize this setting is imagining an overhead projector with a colored portrait projected to a screen. Placing a part in between the projection and screen results as its illumination. Background gives three different settings available as well as an image file upload option in which has several environments, palettes for indoor and outdoor scenery. Reflection alters the throwing back magnitude by which a body or surface of light emits without absorbing it. Matte image-based lighting is most commonly used with preset reflections in the scenery and material settings. Stage gives the different settings to offset and size the stage or set scenery. Shadows has an array of settings to manipulate the edges, Quality, BIOS offset, and gradient clamp, among other settings. Several other studio setup settings to review are its rendering modes. Depending on your operating system, you will be able to interpret which render loads optimal for your processing capabilities. Also, decal for any type of substrate that you would like to be printed on any surface of the part. Material texture has the same capabilities as the system materials imported into feature groups. Scene Editor is a more user-friendly setup method for Advanced Studio and Ray Trace Studio. Also, you are able to abstract the stage shadow and floor reflection within the hotbar. After all the desirable scene settings have been set, you are then able to capture a studio image, which exports a, an image file to be further implemented, or also produce a high quality image with different methods of applying finalized shading to the part in views. And that concludes this render tutorial.